Hey guys, it's Cobb. I'm going to be talking to you today about a couple of different major scale patterns. Um, today we're going to be using the key of C major. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C as the root. Um, we're going to look at two octave scale patterns. Um, here we go. So the first shape I'm going to show you is the major scale box shape. Um, for a box shape, your fingers are in one position across the fretboard. In this case, we're going to be in uh, seventh position, you know, index finger on the seventh fret, uh, middle finger on the eighth, ring finger on the ninth, and key on the tenth. Um, the shape, the scale pattern itself will be t eight, ten on the next string, seven, eight, ten, seven, nine, ten, seven, nine, ten. 8, 10, 7, 8. So that's uh, C on the 8th, D on the 10th, E on the 7th, F on the 8th, G on the 10th, A on the 7th, B on the 9th, C on the 10th. Next octave, D on the 7th, E on the 9th, uh, F on the 10th, G on the 8th, A on the 10th, B on the 7th, and then C on the 8th. Um, and back down. 8, 7, 10, 8, 10, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7, 10, 8, 7, 10, 8. The main advantage of this scale, I think, is its ability to, or this scale shape, excuse me, is its ability to teach you the sound of the major scale, and the reason it's better for that is because there's no position shifting. Um, and there's really nothing you have to think about with your hand. Once you've learned the frets, these shapes, it's just up and down, up and down. Um, so you can listen and analyze, and you can think more about the, uh, the note that's being produced rather than how you're producing the note. Um, the five string shape is a little bit different from that. Um, so let's get to that now. So this shape is a little bit different from the box shape. Um, for starters, it's not a box shape. It's also only a five string pattern. Um, so what you'll do here, instead of starting on your middle finger like with the box shape, you're going to start on your index finger on the 8th fret. Um, middle finger will play the D on the 10th fret, pinky on the E on the 12th fret, F on the 8th fret, same index finger, middle finger on the G on the 10th fret, pinky on the A on the 10th fret, index finger on the B on the 9th fret, and then you're going to shift and play the C with your index finger on the 10th fret. From there you'll continue on D with your middle finger on the 12th fret, E with your pinky on the 14th, F with your index finger on the 10th, G on the 12th fret with your middle finger, A with your pinky on the 14th fret, B on the 12th with your index, and then C. You can shift, but since we're only doing two octaves, you can go ahead and use your middle finger if you prefer. And then back down. So the main advantage of this scale shape as opposed to the box shape is for me that it's a five string shape. With the six string box shape, once you get to the top fret here, you can do a couple more notes, but unless you're willing to leave the shape, you've run out of stuff to do. You're at the top of its limit. It's a two octave shape. Um, with the three note per string shifting pattern, you get to the top of that second octave and you have room to go. You know, up to a third octave. Um, with about the same amount of extra work before you have to shift. So you get three full octaves if you extend it as opposed to two full octaves at the pinnacle of the box shape. Um, in addition to that, it's also good to learn uh, just as a finger exercise because these are movable shapes. You can play the box shape, you know, on the third fret. In G, you can 
also play this shape and you start to stretch your pinky out a little bit and pinky flexibility, finger flexibility in general, but pinky control I think is one of the larger problems guitar players suffer from. Um, so you've got that. I mean, you can go down to the F. Um, really easy. You can do it with your index finger and uh, ring finger, actually, um, because it's got a lot of open strings in it. But if you're doing it from the uh, shifting position you have, So you've got a lot more of a stretch going on. And it's good for your fingers to be as flexible as possible because, again, you're a guitar player. Flexibility, versatility are the key. Um, it's important to learn both scale shapes, though. Don't think one is better than the other. A lot of the times, depending on what you're told to play, what you hear in your head, what you hear on the radio, or what have you, whatever you're trying to put onto the guitar, sometimes it'll be easier to play in the box position where you know, the notes are sort of jumpy and you want to keep your fingers close together, but other times they're going to be in strange places where, you know, the larger pattern serves you a little more good. Being able to find the octave, find the note when they jump octaves, it's a little bit trickier in the box shape, at least for me. For me, I like the shifting shape because when I have to play something I'm hearing or play something on the fly, I have a scale. <laughs> same scale with the box once you get to the top of the scale it's a new pattern um, so it just depends on you know the music at hand and what have you but as I said it's important to learn both scales it's also very important to practice with a metronome my metronome cost me one dollar it's just a basic little something that'll keep a beat for you. Um, always, always practice with a metronome. Always practice as slow as you need to. Um, and have fun. I'll see you guys tomorrow.